All right, today's fun project. It's an 05 Accord, Honda Accord, and we've got some check engine lights on. So I want to show that, see what we got here. I've already pulled some stuff apart, but I want to show the codes. We've got a P2183, P2185, and a P011. The 2183 is the engine coolant temperature, temperature sensor 2 uh, circuit range performance. The 2185 is the engine coolant temperature sensor 2 circuit high. And the 0111 is intake air temp sensor circuit, which I believe is related to the coolant temperature sensor in the uh, ECM there. So let's take a look at what we got. I removed the lower valance. First, I want to show where that number two sensor is. Um, there's one sensor for the temperature gauge on the dashboard, and this other sensor feeds um, the signal to the ECM to control the air fuel. Okay, so we're at the front of the car now. This is the driver's side. Here's the battery. And we go down below in front of the left front wheel. I already removed the, the uh, cover here. This piece. There's clips. There's like four or five clips here. There's one around the corner. Let me get that right up. Where's my finger? There it is. Right up in here. So you got to pop these pins. Let me show you the pin. These pins here. This is pushed in. You take a screwdriver into this slot. Pop that out. And then just pry it out with your screwdriver. And this plug will, this whole thing will come right out. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of them here. What do we got? Two, three, four, seven. And then there are two bolts show where those are those are located there's one right here they're number 10 millimeter and then there's one right down down over there all right here's a bolt right here 10 millimeter and these will fit show you there's the lower bumper cover one here and one on the other side anyway so that's easy enough to get this thing out of the way can see how it fits up into the fender well behind the tires on both sides. Get that out of here. We're under the car now. And let's get some light. Got the lower radiator hose right here. Here's the radiator drain petcock. Right there, let's get some light on that. That white plastic piece here. And then, here's our good number two, or bad I should say, number two sensor. It sits in the lower part of the, of the radiator. Let's get this in focus. Alright. I have it disconnected. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way. It's a two-wire uh, coolant sensor. It's called a thermistor. So it basically, with the temperature variance, the ohms will change on this. So I can't really get a picture inside, but I can show you the connector. The thing to look here, the thing to look for here is corrosion. First off, inside that connector. Man, that does not look focused, but I'll try my best. There we go. Right inside there, look for green, fuzzy, white, fuzzy corrosion. All right, I want to show where the two different sensor locations are overall, so it'll be easier for guys diagnosing the uh, problem. The EC2, the engine coolant temperature number two, is down here 
on the left side of the car, driver's side below the fan housing, which is down in there where we were earlier. And an overall view of where the sending unit for the um, temperature gauge is, is right back here on the back of the engine, back of the cylinder head. And that is down in here, back behind this area. We're right above the uh, valve cover here. We've got to go down towards the cylinder head. Let me see if I can get a mirror on it, an observation mirror here. We'll see if I can show you where it is down there. Okay, I got it on my mirror. It's right there. Let me see. Okay, right there. You can see that black harness with the two wires. Not that green one, but right down in there. That copper, and then there's a white connector into the black harness. That's right into the back of the cylinder head. So that's right down. Here's the air box right here. You go up here towards this canister, it's right back down inside there. You gotta reach around this way and under to get to that one. Okay, since it's too tight to get the camera up really on the coolant sensor, I've got an observation mirror. So I'm gonna show you uh, where that is or how what it looks like on this Honda. Doing my own meter test and barely touching those leads. It it's actually flexing, it's bending because it's so weak. Unfortunately, I can't get that on camera, I don't think. You guys can see in there, but there's some white residue. You see that white residue on the left side? That's all corrosion, and that pin on that side is super flimsy. I'm going to confirm that it's it definitely needs to be replaced. It's defective, and... Um, I'm still going to try warming up the car and taking an ohm meter reading on it just to see because I don't want to plug in the connector because I'm, I have a feeling that pin is so fragile that it's going to break off inside the connector and then I'd have to wind up replacing that. The connector looks okay. I just put contact cleaner on it. Hopefully it can be reused. Sometimes it'll need to be replaced also. So... What I'm going to do is test this just, just to see what the ohms are, replace this sensor, and reconnect everything clean, and hopefully it should be okay then. All right, what I want to demonstrate here is I have the ECT, the engine coolant temperature sensor uh, 2, disconnected. You can see, well, maybe see, it's right up in here. I've got the harness unplugged. And what I want to show is what I had said earlier, that that has nothing to do with the temperature reading. So you have to be aware that there's two sensors, and the ECM is using that sensor to control the fuel-air mixture. There's the temperature gauge. The car's been running for about, I don't know, 5, 10 minutes. It's, that's about normal. Let me see. That's about where it should be running. I don't know. That's probably about 180 degrees right now, approximately. Let's see. Let's look at the, the PID values. I've got the ECM hooked up, and it's showing right now engine coolant temperature 168 degrees, so close, almost 170. It's still warming up. We got the min and the max. So there's the mean, but anyhow. We're at about 172 degrees, and that's reading off the ECT-1, I guess you could call it. So don't let that fool you because, like I said, you see it's unplugged. And, like, the next test we'll do is I'll let it run for... I want to see that number come up a little bit. Let me see if I can... I'll hold it around 2,500, 2,000. See if that 172 can get up there a little bit more and then I'll do the I want the thermostat to open so the ECT can get real warm and then we'll test the ohms on it hopefully the pin won't snap off because it's that weak all right we're at a 197 degrees I'm gonna shut it down the thermostat has been open for a little bit and we'll go check that reading. Alright, got the test leads hooked up. The engine's been warmed up as you saw. 
and I'm on both those connectors and here's my meter it's upside down I got it rusted on the frame rail because I only have two hands and I need four but anyhow it's confirming that there's a short inside that sensor there should be an ohm reading I'm not sure the specific ohm readings if I did get a value I would have looked it up to see if it was in spec but when we have an open we know that sensor is shot especially when it's at full operating temperature here so the ECM is not receiving a signal because of that and that's why we're getting the check engine code for that that uh, ECT too so we'll get a new sensor put that in things should work well all right here's the coolant drain I just lit up the cut top here and I got to drain it into a container um, to remove the sensor I'm going to use a 3 8 deep socket. This thing's about two and a half inches long. The ratchet, just place that over top and turn it counterclockwise. So I'm going to wait until the coolant drains and then I'll just unscrew this. It's threaded in and there's a rubber o ring on there. It's loose now, actually, it's finger tight, finger loose. And I'll take it out. So that's how that's done. It's simple enough. All right, I got the old sensor out, and as I suspected, there's plenty of corrosion down in there. You can see all that white, fluffy, scaly stuff. It's corroded, and if you notice the pin on the left, it's completely snapped off. And the right one isn't far from falling off either. That's how much corrosion is in here. And that's why I couldn't get any resistance out of it. And here's the actual pin right there. It just corroded right off. So that's the one that fit on the left. So anyhow, we'll get a new sensor put in there. All right, I have the new sensor mounted in the vise so I can take a reading here on the ohms. And it looks like we're getting about 2.88 times a 20,000 scale. So that's what that is for ohm readings. It's definitely a big improvement over what was there. And now I'll go uh, put that into the radiator, get it installed, and we'll take it from there. All right, so to summarize, we had those trouble codes. Got the new sensor in. Um, drained the antifreeze. I flushed the system. I've got new antifreeze in there. This is the Honda Genuine Type 2 Long Life. It's bluish turquoise color. It's 21 bucks a gallon is what I paid for it. It's pretty expensive, takes a couple gallons, but anyhow, get that filled up with some fresh fluid, and if your fluid's in good condition, you could always drain it in a clean pan and reuse it, but this one needed to be changed anyhow. So that's, that's that, let's get to the next step. So the new sensor is in, we've got fresh coolant in there, let's fire this up. Fires right up, and as you see that check engine light that was right there, gone. So that's what we want to see. Hope that helps somebody out. We use the Intermotor SMP from Advance Auto. It's part number WT5068. That's the radiator coolant sensor. And took care of the problem. So don't forget to click subscribe and comment, like, all that good stuff. Hope that helps somebody out. Take it easy.